information put out there about MBOGA since July. Uh, I'll just go through it again just to demystify some of those pieces. I am a vet, uh, worked for Dairy and Z, uh, but in previous life worked for governments in Canada, UK and New Zealand. And as a young vet in the UK, treated lots of cows and calves with mycoplasma. And that's really important because this bug is all over the world. It's in every country apart from Norway, interestingly. Uh, and it's not the end. It's not the end of dairy farming. It's not the end of beef farming. It's just another disease that we just have to deal with. Uh, so that's really important. However, we are in a unique situation that we might be able to stop it. And as Jeff's been talking about, we don't want to give up on that chance because if we can avoid having to treat it, we should. So fortunately, we've got a government that's actually interested in doing that. Australia didn't even bat an eye when they got it 10 years ago. Um, just going into this, um, disease it causes typically in dairy cows is mastitis and typically it's uh, a multi-quarter of mastitis that doesn't respond to the normal antibiotics that we see uh, working. It can also cause abortions, it causes pneumonia, particularly in health systems which we don't have too many of, uh, but overseas it's really common to get pneumonia from mycoplasma bovis. Uh, and it can cause arthritis and joint ill in calves, particularly calves that have had milk from an infected cow. And that's really important because you only need one infected cow going into the calf milk to cause a lot of infection, so that's, that's a challenge. Um, the silent spreaders. So most of the farms that uh, are currently IPs, the majority of those farms have no clinical disease. And this is quite typical of, of mycoplasma bovis. And we see this overseas. Farms get it, they get a problem, and it kind of goes dormant for two or three years, and then it flares up again. So it sort of sits in the background. That's a real challenge, and, and Jeff's alluded to that. Um, it doesn't affect humans, it's really important, there's no food safety risk and most of those beef farms uh, that export beef from North America, mycoplasma is really common in those feedlots and people are eating that, that meat, there's no human health risk, uh, there's no trade risk because every other country's got it, there's no barriers in place, so that's really important as well. Um, as I say, it's very common around the world, we've covered that uh, and it's difficult to find and, and those tests are really challenging and what Jeff didn't say was that some of the farms that have recently, uh, some of the more recent ones to become infected in the primary group, the Van Leeuwen group, had had lots and lots of tests and then they go positive. So that's a challenge that, and it's a limitation of the test and it's a little bit like looking for needle in a haystack situation. So it doesn't affect all the herd, it can just be a few animals. Um, in terms of the bug, it's a bacteria, but it's a really small bacteria and it doesn't have a cell wall. And that's good, because it means it doesn't hang around very long. It dies, UV light, drying out, it just dies very easily. The downside is most of the anti antimicrobials we use, penicillins, they attack the cell wall when the bacteria divides. And because it doesn't have a cell wall, they're completely useless, have no effect at all. So there's good and bad. Cool, is there a um, next slide? I get the risk. Well, this is, this is quite an important slide. Um, it's basically talking about how it spreads uh, and where the real risk is. And uh, it's hard to see, but the big, the big three quarters of that pie is about animal movement. So because it doesn't survive outside of the host, outside of the animal very easily, the main way this spreads is through a live animal moving. And of course, there's a lot of animals moving around before we knew we had this in New Zealand, before any restrictions were in place. We call that the silent spread. We don't know how long. That was there before, it could have been six months, it could be three months, we don't know yet, we may never know, but it moves it easily. So when you're moving animals around, that's the main way of spreading. Uh, the casual over the fence encounter, uh, so essentially if, if cows can get nose to nose between two herds, two farms, it can spread that way. It's not common, but it can happen. And that's why we heard a lot of talk about boundary fencing and having an a, a electric fence, a hot wire, to avoid having direct contact with neighbours. Um, unpasteurised milk, we've touched on that, and this is primarily for calves, uh, taking milk from infected cows, often that have no clinical signs. And the, the very small wedge at the top is about vehicles, machinery, clothing, footwear, fence posts. So some diseases, and the horror of disease we all talk about and dread, foot and mouth disease, spreads really easily on vehicles, on clothing, on boots. Uh, it, it survives, it spreads, it's exactly how it spreads. This point doesn't do that because it's so easy to kill it. UV light, drying, makes it very hard to, to spread it in that way. So yes, it's important to clean stock trucks. Yeah, it's a really bad idea to backload off a stock truck that's had the uh, cows in there and then putting different animals from different farms. That's not a great plan. But, the, but there isn't vehicles, machinery, people, contractors. They're really quite low risk. And if they're doing basic biosecurity, cleaning, 
disinfecting, they're managing the risk really well. And that's really important because it, it speaks to this whole um, fear that's creeping in around, oh, we've had a contractor on a farm that might have Envovis or it's under restrictions. If they're cleaning, if they're disinfecting off, they're managing the risk, and that's, that's really important. And next slide. Off the hook, I'll hand back to Jeff.